Leopards used to live only in the jungle. Now they're found lolling around Britain's lounges in the form of an extraordinary crossbreed. These part leopard, part domestic cats are called Bengals. They're the first cats ever to have been bred from a wild cat parent and they're a craze which is taking Britain by storm. The Bengal cat originated from a cross between an Asian leopard cat and domestic cats. We have Bengals in this country which have been imported from America. It's the first time there has ever been a pedigree breed with wild cats in their background. And that's why Bengals are causing controversy. Their breeding is unregulated and experimental. The cat world is at war with itself over them, with some breeders arguing that until the wild genes are properly diluted, the cats are dangerous and unsafe to sell. So how did the Bengal come to be bred commercially? The original breeder found that after two or three years, she had a very attractive cat, and she presented this at a cat show, and it literally took the cat world by storm. In total, we have about 3,000 registered with the Governing Council at the moment. Esmond Gay and his fiancée Sarah are among the handful of breeders of Bengals in the UK. I was uh, one of the first breeders to have Bengals and uh, it started as, uh, as a hobby and really is still a hobby. It's just that I started with two cats and I've ended up with 60. This is a very rare golden marble Bengal. Um, he's quite unique because he's the first one of his type ever to be born in Great Britain. He's a beautiful little boy. We call him Teddy because he's as floppy as a teddy bear, even though his actual um, grandfather is the wild Asian leopard cat. The first generation crossbreed is known as an F1. Further generations are commonly referred to as F2s, 3s, 4s and so on. The closer to the wild, the more desirable. They may be beautiful, but because they're exotic and rare, breeding them is big business. One can pick up kittens as cheap as £400, um, but one does get what one pays for. Our kittens start at about, about £600, and for an F4, those prices can go up to about 1750 maybe even 2000 The F1s, there's never been any for sale in the country, apart from the ones that we actually purchased when they first came in, and we paid £45,000 each for them. Some people think that F1s are wild. That's very unfortunate because they are the tamest, they are the most sweet, they are the most docile cats that we have. I'm concentrating on breeding from Asian leopard cats and hoping to produce the very first F1 Bengals to be bred in Great Britain. Jeff and Betty Ward have been breeding Bengals for six years now. They disagree with Esmond and will only breed from fourth generation cats. Anybody that uh would be interested in getting a Bengal, which is, say, first generation, at, or even second generation, as a young kitten, they might be perfectly friendly and lovely. But almost certainly they will revert back to the wild when they're about 18 months old. I wouldn't trust even a third generation, not all the time. It's not until the fourth generation do they become really friendly cats and they're just like an ordinary domestic cat then. Jeff and Betty feel that they know best. They own the real thing, two wild Asian leopard cats rescued from a wildlife park. They hold a license to keep these in their garden. They are very wild cats. They, they might look like uh, little pussy cats, but they're not. Particularly the boy that we've got, he will be really nasty if, uh, if you go near him. See, see, see that? And that's the hand that feeds you, isn't it, eh? <laughs> the first generation between an Asian leopard cat and a domestic cat has 50% of the wild genes and the other half coming from the domestic cat. As far as the cat itself is concerned, it may favour the wild side or the domestic side. And in this case, you would be very careful to assess the kittens at a very early age. 
To protect the public against the potential danger of keeping wild animals in domestic circumstances, there's a dangerous Wild Animals Act. It states that wild cats and hybrid wild cats require a licence and secure premises. But what's not clear is how many generations down from the wild this covers. It's left to local councils to interpret. For the general public, advice from anyone other than a breeder is hard to come by. The Governing Council of the Cat Fancy doesn't get involved in legal or financial matters in buying and selling kittens. This is a matter between the breeder and the purchaser of a kitten. Meanwhile, for Esmond and Sarah, business is booming. Come on, darling. Yes, there is quite a lot of money to be made if you have got good quality kittens. We're selling an awful lot of kittens to some very famous people who pay some very, very high prices for our kittens, sometimes up to £21,000 each for the rarest. Celebrity buyers of fourth-generation Bengals include Geoffrey Archer and Rolf Harris. Most of the money that we get goes straight into a wildcat conservation programme. I suppose in the last three and a half years, we've made just over a million pounds. With so much money to be made, the search for the next designer cat is on. In America, they're already experimenting with a whole new range of wildcat crosses. There's already the Chousey, a cross between a domestic and a jungle cat. Here in the UK, the only official concern about such crossbreeding comes from the governing council of the cat fancy. It has been decided that no other breeds with a wild background, including offshoots of the Bengal breed, so Bengals mated to any other breed, these won't be recognised in the future by the Governing Council. Whilst the governing body refuses to register other wild crossbreeds in this country, it'll need much tighter licensing laws to keep them out. So anyone with the necessary funds will still be able to buy designer wild cats in the foreseeable future and give them the run of their home, whatever the risks. <laughs>